Hey everyone, it's Jack. And today I'm going to take a look at Tuxedo Linux. Tuxedo Linux is a German distro based on Kubuntu. And this was brought to my attention by Werner Klassen. Werner, thank you so much for pointing this out to me. This looks really great. Yes, I am going to take a look at this for sure. And Tuxedo Linux is the distro that's made for their Tuxedo computers. So they have their own line of notebooks and towers available that you can purchase from Tuxedo. However, this distro, I believe, also works on non-Tuxedo hardware. The kernel is optimized for Tuxedo hardware, so it really is a great experience from what I understand to have the Tuxedo hardware and the OS together. But we're going to download it because I don't have Tuxedo hardware. I'm going to try it out on non-Tuxedo hardware. It's supposed to work just fine without the hardware. So that's why I want to take a look at it. And it really looks great. And so does their hardware, actually. They're, I was looking over their desktops and notebooks, and they really look fantastic. If I had one of those, I would definitely uh, test it out on one of those. However, I think we'll get results that are just fine on the ISO that's available on the website. They also have something called a web FAI, which means a fully automated install. And so that's something that I think is available through Tuxedo as well, or they even give you instructions on how to make your own. But however, the FAI, the fully automated install is only intended for the Tuxedo hardware. So if you don't have Tuxedo hardware, then it's probably not going to work for you. But if you do have it, uh, I think that's a really cool feature that they offer for their stuff. And if I were to scroll all the way to the bottom here of the website, down here in the footer, we got a link here called Tuxedo Web FAI. Out on their website, they kind of give you a little rundown of what it's about and even how to make your own bootable FAI using the software that's available on the distro itself, which is cool. So here you can see that you can create a desktop environment with Web FAI and all these different distros. So they give you a ton of different choices, not only the Tuxedo OS itself, which is based on Kubuntu, Ubuntu KDE, but also Ubuntu, OpenSUSE, Zubuntu, which is the XFCE version of Ubuntu, Ubuntu Mate, Kubuntu itself, the original and elementary OS. So that's cool. And of course, they all come in long-term support, LTS. That way you get five years of lifetime usability out of it. And that saves you a lot of trouble having to go through upgrade steps and all that. So they really kind of thought this out really well on the Tuxedo website. And I'm really excited to download this and give it a try. So I'm going to go. And I didn't really find any real obvious download links for the ISO. But if you go all the way to the bottom of the page, Plus, I left a link in the description below. Down here under About Tuxedo, you can see here we got Tuxedo OS. And so I'm just going to click on that link, and that'll take us out to the download area where they have the ISOs. And so here's our tailor-made OS for your Tuxedo. And I believe this is going to work on outside the Tuxedo, too, because I remember reading somewhere that you can use it regardless of whether you have a Tuxedo or not. It's just that the kernel is really just really tweaked really well for the Tuxedo hardware. So here we got our download link here, Download Tuxedo OS. So I'm just going to click on this guy. And then here it gives us some options. And we got our ISO link right here. So I'm just going to click on this. And then, of course, they also have the MD5 hash and all that if you want to just double check and verify that it's a good image. However, I'm a slack. I usually just download the ISO and toss it on. <laughs> so I'm going to download this real quick, load it in, and I'll be right back. So here we are on our startup screen. We got our USB boot, boot from DVD slash VM. And then we got our web FAI notebook and desktop. And if you're using the notebook, you got to have the tuxedo hardware as well. I think I'm going to go with the boot from DVD slash VM. I think that's more appropriate for my situation. And hit that and see what happens. And now a black screen. And this is taking a minute or so to load in because uh, it's loading in all the live data here. So 
this ought to just take a second and then we ought to be in. Ah, there we go. So cool. We got this nice splash screen here with a bunch of different languages. Uh, looks like Russian, German, English, and Chinese. So we got Privyat, Guten Tag, Hello, and Ni Hao. So very cool. And then German up there. Willkommen zu Erstein von Tuxedo OS 1. Ugh. Sorry for my awful German. <laughs> I'm going to go down here. You can see by default that the language is Deutsch. We'll just kind of select this and from the drop down, I'm going to look for English and there it is American English. So I'm going to hit that hit next. And then here we got our time zone by default and that's all good. So I'm going to hit next again. And then we got English our default. So that's good for our locale. So now I shrunk down a little bit here to get better situated and so forth. So that's better. Our locales now should be kind of configuring in here. And so this will just take a minute. And then once they're configured, it should go into a live desktop environment here, tailored to our locale. So nice. And there's the tuxedo logo. So looking good. I think we're going to be in a live environment any second. And there it is. Wow. What a beautiful background. That's gorgeous. I like that impressionist painting style there that we got. Very nice. And then here is our KDE panel looking good as well. And then this beautiful KDE menu, of course, with the nice color accents, really like the color accents there. And so let's open up our installer. Let's just get right to it. Okay. Now we're getting a message here that says that Tuxedo OS is not being installed on original Tuxedo OS equipment. And so that's just letting us know that some things like the control center, not all the features in there will work without the tuxedo hardware. Cause there's a couple things in there that are tailored just for tuxedo hardware. One of them, I think being like the Aquarius add on and so forth. So that's just letting us know that's pretty harmless, not a big deal. And there's also something in there called Tormta, which I'm not really familiar with, but another thing that's, specific to the tuxedo hardware that won't be relevant if you're not using tuxedo. So not a deal there. I'll just hit OK. And now we got another message and this one wants to know if we want to do an encrypted install. And of course I don't. So I'm just going to sit hit no because I really don't need an encrypted install. And after all, it's a demo. <laughs> OK, and here's our installer. So really nice and we're just going to hit next and then I'm going to select erase disk. We'll just kind of keep it simple. And then by default, there's no swap partition. If you want to select a swap, that's kind of up to you. You could like use a swap with hibernate uh, or just swap to a file. And I think I'll go with that. That's just simple. Then we'll hit next. And then I'll add in my stuff, the usual things like my username and jump down here and put in a password. There we go. And also there's an option to log in automatically without asking for the password if you like. Typically I don't check that because I like having the login prompt, but if it irritates you, then just check the box. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit install now, and then this will go ahead and install the system and we're off. All right. So this is great. I'm going to let it do its thing, pause the video, and I'll be right back when it's done. Okay. And we're all done here. So that went pretty good and didn't take too long. I think five or six minutes. So I'm going to just hit done here and let this restart. Okay. It's rebooting in. I see that the kernel there is at a 5.15, uh, which is consistent with an LTS on Ubuntu or Kubuntu in this case. We saw our logo there. That's really cool. So hopefully we're going to see a login screen and there it is. Wow. Nice. Beautiful login screen too. I like it. Very nice. So I'm going to go ahead and authenticate and we'll see how this came out. And there's our logo. So all looking good. Our splash screen and our desktop. Excellent. So here we are, we are in our desktop and it's all looking good here. It looks like it installed well. I really like the background. That's gorgeous. And here we got, of course, our KDE panel and our menu. So our menu looks a lot more populated now and still has that really nice color scheme there. Really nice. And then of course we got our icons only taskbar down here. And then over on this side, 
as I scooch out of the way, we got our volume control here and then our network icon. For the volume control, you can just click that and then you got access to the different controls. And then our networks are showing up over here. We got a wired connection. And then we can click on our clock here and it brings up our calendar. And so the KDE calendar is always something I really like. Very nice. And then these are our additional icon, that little arrow kind of indicator and can see all our extras in here that we can have access to. So that's all nice to have easy access. So those are our hidden icons, so it doesn't take up so much space. And then that is our show desktop at the end. So if you have a bunch of windows open, you can click that and it'll minimize them and you can see the desktop. And here's our Dolphin file manager. And I really like the theme there. That Those icons look really nice. I like the, the red and the gray or silver there. Beautiful combination, really good. I'm just gonna open up my console. I just hit Alt Spacebar for K Runner, bring up my console, and whoa, an ASCII aquarium. That is so cool, wow. That is awesome. I should have thought of that since I'm a- Super genius. Well, okay, aside from that, this is great. So this must be like a first time intro or something. I like that. So if I close this and then I hit Alt Space again to bring up K Runner and I type in console again, then it actually comes up as itself. So that's really cool. What a nice intro there to the console. So I'm gonna magnify this a bit and then I'm gonna see if HTOP is installed. So I'm just and type that in. And there it is. Awesome. So oh, not a bad resource usage there, about 981, which is pretty good considering that I've run a few things already. So oh, I like that very good. And let's just double check our kernel. So I'm just gonna do a uname hyphen R here. And it is 5.15. Excellent, just like we saw in the startup. So very cool, that's our kernel. And again, I really like that. That was <laughs> nice, that there, that ASCII aquarium. That was cool. And so here we got our Discover down in our panel. And here we got our updates. So that also, I think, is hooked up to Discover. And it is, so that's cool. I'm just going to get the updates out of the way real quick and just kind of run those so we're up to date. And here we are. So everything's in here. So I'm just going to fast track this with the pause button. So I'm going to come up here and just hit update all. And this is always a good thing to do when you first do your install. So I'm going to authenticate here and just let that update run. And then I'm going to pause just like that. See, that was quick. I'm going to close everything. Just do a restart and hit that. And I'll be back in a second. And that was a quick second, wasn't it? I told you that would be quick. So back to our desktop. Okay, and we're back. So where were we before we were so rudely interrupted by an update? Oh yeah, looking at stuff. So bringing our dolphin back up and then let's go into Discover again, but this time we're just opening up the Software Center because we want to look and see that Discover is working okay and here's all our applications. So they're looking good. Just gonna maximize that. So we've got a bunch of featured applications there. And if we go over here to applications on the menu, we can see a whole bunch of things in here showing up already. And here's our categories, games, and graphics. Let's see what they got in games. So, wow, Space Cadet Pinball, cool. A 3D pinball, pinball. So it's kind of a reverse engineering of the Windows pinball. Nice, gotta have it. <laughs> it's worth a look, cool. And while that's downloading, let's see what else we got here. They got an arcade category. That's probably my favorite. And then if we go back and lots of arcade style games under this and Neverball, that's kind of cool. I've played that before. So the pinball is still downloading. So I'm going to hit back here and just kind of take a look at some of the other categories. And if we go over here, there's graphics. I might as well go look, get the old standby there, Inkscape. That's a good one to kind of gauge what our versions are like. And being that we're in an LTS distro, 
I don't expect it to be the newest version out of the repo, probably like 1.1 or so. So if we go in here and it is 1.1.2, so that is an older version of Inkscape, but stable. And so stability is kind of what you want on an LTS. However, let's look at our sources. They do have FlatHub installed, that's cool. So we could also, if we wanted the latest and greatest version of Inkscape, I could simply just select the flat hub there or flat pack and then that'll give us the latest 1.2 although in the display here it's still showing 1.1.2 even though the flat pack is showing up there so actually the graphic didn't change for the version but we should be able to get the latest so I'm just going to hit install and find out I can't imagine a flat pack being older so it's pretty safe to assume it's going to be a 1.2 but since we're in the downloading phase here we might as well download this too and so i'll just pause this when it's done and i finished downloading so let's just hit the launch button here and launch this guy and see how it looks so yes that is 1.2 i can see it right there on that little orange logo glad to see that very good and so i might as well open it up and just see that the theming works okay with the whole scheme here I'm just going to hit that and open it up. And yes, everything looks great. The panels, the toolbar and everything is just perfectly melded in with the theme. So glad to see that. And if I come up here to our menu, I can just go to help and about. And again, it should further verify. There we see Netscape 1.2. So we are using latest and greatest absolutely for sure. I'm going to close that. And that is our Discover. Let's go into settings real quick and just kind of take a look at the repos that it's accessing. So here you can see that flat pack is checked and then we got our Linux vendor and then all these Tuxedo OS settings here for Jammy Jellyfish. Nice. So all looking good there. And if we go up here, we can see that Inkscape is showing up in our menu. So I'm glad to see that that popped in there. And then there's our game. Uh, the Speed Cadet Pinball. Let's see if that works. I, I'm kind of curious of what this is like. This looks kind of cool. So there it is. Wow. Hey, that is nicely done. So I'm going to maximize that there. I'm not really sure how you control that. I guess you would use the space bar to advance the plunger, maybe? Uh, I guess I space bar longer. And the flippers. Oh. I thought they were going to be like the control keys or something or arrow, but eh -eh. so yeah, I'm not sure what keys will flip that. Hmm. Well, I guess when all else fails, read the directions. <laughs> so here we got player controls. So we can look at, it. ah, okay. So that's what it is. Z and the slash or the left and right flippers. And then they got these other things here, like bumping the machine and all that, which is great. And then mouse left and right. So now I know. Actually clicking my mouse left and right isn't really working, but I'd rather use the keys anyway. So let's try this again one more time. I can't resist. And I'm going to hold the plunger back. Yeah, there we go. So Z and slash, that really worked. And that's a better use of the plunger. Hold the space bar down longer. And excellent. We'll catch that. And I can probably roll this over to a million. So yeah, this really has a real feel to it. Like a pinball machine. And I always love pinball. Anyway. It's, it's a lot of fun. Oh, I missed it. Perfect. Anyway, I won't bore you with the pinball thingy, but that really was fun. And then back in our menu, here's our all applications. It was kind of window style alphabetical. And then of course our categories and graphics where we were before. And then under our internet, we got our Firefox web browser, KDE Connect, KTorrent, all the, and Thunderbird Mail. And then we got VLC player installed by default. I like that too. That's good to see. That means we got all our codecs in order. And then under Office, we got LibreOffice. And I'm assuming it's probably the version that kind of goes with an LTS, probably 7.3-ish. And so this looks nice, and the theming is just perfect. I really like the look. And that's 7.3.62, so pretty good. Not bad at all. So we'll close that and 
that should be our most stable version of LibreOffice on Ubuntu. Nice. Then if we come up here under mouse and we have science and math, our settings system. So these are all kind of the usual KDE stuff. And then we got our Tuxedo Control Center. This is one of the things that said you wouldn't have full compatibility with because of some of the customized stuff in there. And I'm going to scooch over a little bit because I think a message is going to be popping up here. So I just wanted to illustrate that the Tuxedo Control Center is also accessible right here from your panel on the KDE. And so you got this menu here where you can go into the control center and then you got your Aquarius control access if you got that module. And you can also access your tray auto start here. You can uncheck that box if you don't want the control center to show up in your panel at startup. Well, that's good to know too. In our control center here, we have our dashboard and here it's showing our CPU stuff by default. And if we want to access our profiles, we can go in here. And these are our power profiles. You can see you got the mains and the battery there. And then cool and breezy is another option, which runs it cooler, I suppose. Of course, I would typically go with the default and then you have an extreme power save and default custom profile. So you can tweak it pretty good. And then up here, you can change your crypt password. Although we didn't encrypt our drive, but if we did, here we would see an option that allows you to change your encryption password. And then this is an interface to the Aquarius device, that cooling device that you can buy as an accessory to a desktop tuxedo computer. Probably one of those heavy duty gaming ones. Awesome. And then here's a whole bunch of default settings. You can change your profile, display, fan control. So you can really dial down nicely here. And then we go in here and we got our system monitor showing our different settings. And then you can change from English to Deutsch. And so everything would be in German then. <laughs> and then we got our global settings and a theme setting. So this is be the theme for our light and dark theme for the control center. Well, that's kind of nice. That's kind of a newer feature that showed up in KDE, I think around version 524. So that's cool. The control center, nice. So that was that. I like that. And let's look at that other thing that was in there too. I think it was the Web FAI, which means fully automated install. So they have a creator in here. If we open this guy up, we can see in our fully automated installer that we can make a copy of this install of Tuxedo, and we could make that for a desktop PC or a notebook. Of course, you really need to have the Tuxedo hardware for this to work properly, especially for the notebook. You might get away with it on a desktop, but still, you probably really want to have the hardware, which I don't have, So, but it's a nice utility there to kind of replicate your Tuxedo ISO, your Tuxedo desktop, and replicate onto other machines by putting it onto a stick or as a restore or to run it live. So how cool is that? And then if we go up and let's take a look in our system settings. So here's our system settings and it's our normal KDE settings area. And we can click this if we want to change that to a dark theme. And there we go. And I kind of like the dark theme. I'm always kind of partial to that. And so this also changed a little bit. It looks like that's kind of more the traditional breeze look, I think, the color accents. So if I go over here in appearance, yeah, it looks like breeze dark is kind of where it set the dark theme. I kind of like to go with the tuxedo dark. So I'm going to just hit that and apply it. And now we got our tuxedo dark, except our folders are all silver. So I'll have to look at that. I kind of like the silver and red that we had before. So I might want to change the icons too. But here we can see that we got our nice color scheme back in the menu. So I like that salmon color scheme. And here's where you can change your window controls if you like. And then our plasma style, which will kind of give us our general background look inside a window. And I like the tuxedo dark there too. And here's our color scheme. So if you don't want to have the default color scheme that uh, salmon color. You can select this and you can go with like a salmon pink or a green or blue or any of these default like purple or you can customize it and just choose from this huge color palette or pick a preset color over here. 
one of these squares. So if you wanted to go with some shade of blue like that, you could select that and then you got that. And then if you come over here, then it's still silver. <laughs> but it would actually be blue in other areas. But I'm gonna go back with the default because I like the default the best, really. I kind of like that salmon color. And I ended up changing my background. I must have clicked something by mistake. Whoops. So I'm going to hit dark again. And there we go. We're kind of back. So we have our color scheme good. So I like that salmon color. I'm going to come down and just hit apply there. Oops. Or maybe I didn't want to hit apply. Okay. Reselect tuxedo dark and hit okay. I don't know what I did there. I guess I can't talk and click at the same time. <laughs> So now let's look at our window decorations. So here we got a choice between breeze and plastic. Uh, plastic is pretty red. I'll just hit that. Yeah, a little red for my taste, but that's how easy it is if you want to change the decoration on your windows there. But we can also select get new window decorations here. And then this will take us out and show us decorations on the internet. And I'm going to sort by highest rated because then you can see the coolest ones first. <laughs> and here's one called Forma N. So i never heard of that, but it looks kind of cool. Since it's rated number one here, I might as well install it and see what it looks like. So I'll let that install. And now all I gotta do is just hit use, or I can close out of here and select it because now it's showing up here in our window. So I'm gonna hit that. And now you can see our window bar up here on top looks all different so it's kind of got this semi-transparent look which is really cool look and i like that look so that's a nice look i would probably keep that if i was not doing a review and i like the window buttons up there very nicely styled excellent but since we're doing a review i'll just keep it with the default for the sake of continuity <laughs> and now let's go to our icons i kind of want to get there's the tuxedo with the red accent that's nice but we can see we got all our other ones here like humanity and ubuntu like if i select humanity and hit apply uh it doesn't really change right away so i gotta close that and open it occasionally i gotta do that in kde certain distros this is not a big deal but uh, there we go so now we have our orange humanity icons that's kind of a nice look in the gradient kind of cool and so i think i'm going to go with the breeze again though i really like the breeze tuxedo the silver and red i think that's a really sharp looking contrast there so again i tried refreshing with my f5 key i was thinking maybe that would kind of do it but no gotta close it and minimizing it didn't work either so yeah just gotta close it and open it gotta bear it <laughs> so there we go the beautiful silver and red I really like that. So I'm going to stick with that. Nice to have that combination. So now we got our dark theme. And then here you can choose from all kinds of cursors and spinners if you want to change it. I kind of like the default. And then here's our splash screen. By default, we're using our tuxedo splash screen when we log in. When I hit that play button, you can actually see a sample of the splash screen. So this is what it looks like after we log in before we see the desktop. And if I wanted to change that to breeze, then it would look like this. And again, I'm just sampling, so I didn't actually change anything. So I'm going to leave it there on the tuxedo because I like the tuxedo splash there. But you can also choose none if you don't want to splash. You can just go directly to the desktop after logging in. And then here under window management, typically I stick with the defaults there. These are all your typical KDE stuff that I've probably shown a million times. Uh, so nothing really new here. In our workspace behavior, if we go to desktop effects, this is where you can kind of set up your effects. And this is the compositor. And so here under our desktop effects, you can see all the different things. And the, the most common ones are like wobbly windows and magic lamp. They're turned off by default, probably to save resources. Uh, but here you can get a little wobbly effect when you turn on the wobbly windows. So those are our effects. Always fun to look at. <laughs>
and mess with. And then we got our input devices. This is something I usually go into and I like to turn on the num lock so that that's always on. That's just kind of my personal taste. If you're a lefty, you can go in here and click that and select your left-handed mouse mode and that'll reverse your buttons. And then here we got our display and monitor. So if you need to change your resolution and so forth, you can do it right there or your refresh rate. And then here's your compositor settings. So you can turn off your compositor if you're really low on resources. Maybe you have a potato of a computer and it's being dragged down. You can turn off your effects. And then there's our audio settings. So here we can like test our speakers. Left. Run. Right. And that all sounded good. So we know our speakers are working. And then multimedia settings. If you need to tweak any of that stuff, power management, again, all the classic KDE settings. Here's where you'd set your printer up if you want to detect it. About, and so under about, it's showing our plasma version is 5.24.6. So that's uh, a version behind, I believe we're around 5.25. something. And then our kernel 5.15 which is good LTS version there. So that is our control center, nice. Now I'm gonna open up Firefox. I wanna take a look at something. One thing I read on the website is they're using the actual DEB version of Firefox. A lot of Ubuntu typically will use a snap version of Firefox. And so I kinda wanna see if this is a new version, being that it's the deb. And it does appear to be. It looks like it's 105.03. So that looks pretty new to me. Nice. And I kind of like the fact that they're using a dev version rather than a snap. For me, I'm just kind of more comfortable using a browser that's actually using its native binary as opposed to a snap. So I kind of like that they did that. I think that was a good decision on their part. So good job, Tuxedo. <laughs> And so in our, if we want to change our menu, by the way, you can right click here and we can select show alternatives. And then you got different styles that you can choose from. Like the one here on the bottom is more like a Windows 7 style, more simplified. And then the dashboard is kind of like a full screen, kind of a GNOME style, but better. <laughs> so this is really nice here. I like this. This is kind of one of my personal favorites. Got all your categories over there. Then you got widgets here so you can select your widgets right from inside the menu very easily. And speaking of widgets, if we want to add a widget to our panel here, we can just select right, right click and select add widgets. And let's put something on here like a weather widget. And there's our default weather report. Actually, that's not really one of my favorite weather widgets. It's not that great in my opinion. It's not awful, but the temperature doesn't show up for one thing <laughs> on the panel. You have to have it on the desktop. So I'm gonna type in weather and get some more choices here. And ah, here's one, I like this one, the Wunterground, I think it's called. And so let's install that one. That's a really nice weather widget. That's something I like on KDE. So if we close that, then if we go in and open our widgets again. So I'm gonna right click again on the panel and select add widgets. And here I could, should be able to find it in the search. I think weather, uh, oh no, it's called Wunderground, uh, right. So W, uh, there it is, cool. So we can just take this guy and we can drag it down into our panel here and just kind of let go of it. And now you can see that it's showing up. And so now we just got to give a location. So I'm going to click that and configure. And then here is where we can find a location. But actually, before I do that, I want to change our units to Imperial. I want to do that first, because if you change it after you get your location, it's going to erase your location. That's kind of a little bug there. So. You want to do your location last. Do all your other tweaking first. Otherwise, you'll have to re-enter your location. So let's try something like, uh, hmm, how about Naples, Florida? Let's see if find location. And so I'm going to expand this out a bit. So now if we go into the select city, we'll select Naples, Florida, US. Nice. And then here we got a list of stations. So all we got to do is select one of these. And as you can see, it's showing red down here for the status. So that one's not working. 
So let's select another one. And there we got a green. So that one is active and working. So I'm gonna hit apply and then okay. And now you can see the temperature down there in the panel, that's look, looking great. And if you click on that actually and select that, then you can see all the details and how cool is that? It's showing the current temperature and the wind and, and all the good stuff here, humidity. And then if we click off to the side here, it'll close or we can select there. And then if you just hover over it, you can see the details here too, just over the mouse hover. And so that's nice too. It gives you lots of nice details on the weather. So that's a great widget. Again, probably one of my favorite. And I'm gonna open up Dolphin again, just to kind of, I think I closed that by mistake. I thought it was minimized, but I guess not. <laughs> so cool. Oh, and looks like I got a copy of the weather widget over there too. Hmm. I must have put that in there by mistake. So let's remove that. I'm gonna select enter edit mode. And then this will let me just kind of right click on this and select remove. And now we just have our one widget. And then over here on this side, we have our more options. And there's our message that shows that it was removed. And under more options, we have this. So we got our panel alignment, visibility, opacity. So here's where you can kind of change things around if you want to change any of that. I rarely ever change anything there, if not ever. And then over here, we got our panel height. So if you want to change your panel height there, by default, it's 44 pixels, but you can make that bigger or smaller just by ticking that. So that's cool to know. And then to get out of panel edit mode, we just click up there on top and then that'll restore our panel back to its normal thingy there. And I'm just gonna close that message too that shows that our widget was removed. That gives you an option to undo that change too. So that's nice to know. And then here we got our wallpaper. So let's find, look at our wallpaper. So far what I'm seeing is ah, the basic uh, KDE stuff that I typically see in a KDE install. So nothing new so far, but nice wallpapers. Oh, there we go. Now we have some tuxedo branded wallpaper. And so some nice looking ones here. There's our background. I'm gonna hit my show desktop here in the lower right corner. And wow, beautiful. That looks like a nice warm place. <laughs> and here we have another one, another change of scenery. And that's kind of cool, a combination of photography and pixelated backgrounds. That's kind of cool. And there's some tulips. That's a nice spring one there. And then we have a sky scene and a lot of nice landscapes, the beach. There's a lizard there or maybe a gecko, salamander. Nice. And it has that effect again in the background there, that kind of artistic effect. I kind of like this one the best though. I really like this wallpaper. So I think I'm going to go with that. And then of course we have our icon orientation. So our icons on our desktop by default are arranged in rows. People are probably familiar with the columns instead, especially if you're a Windows user, your icons kind of go up and down, but here it's set by default to go across horizontally, but columns will let them go up and down vertically if you're more comfortable with that. I'll stick on some icons here so you can just kind of get a feel for what I'm saying. So if I go down here, I can just kind of go into our menu and just right click on an application like Firefox and I can just select add to desktop and then it'll show up here on our desktop. And now if I put another one out there, like how about Inkscape? So I right click, add to desktop. And then when I go out to the desktop, now we got them both here, but they're side by side. So that's the row setting there. So the more I add, for example, maybe I'll add in a home folder. Uh, they'll just go all the way across horizontally. If I want it vertically, just select columns, hit apply, and now they're going up and down. And that's the kind of the traditional orientation. And so now I'll just kind of link out a home folder and there's our Toadwig folder. So they're going up and down, that's the traditional, but by default, they are arranged this way. So if I hit apply, they're going across. So you'll have rows instead of columns, which is kind of cool if you like a change of pace. So I'm good with that. I a lot of times have mine arranged that way. So I'm gonna hit cancel. So in rows, uh, it tends to feel like your desktop doesn't fill up so quick too. <laughs> Ah, so man, I think I covered everything. Wow, 
I got to tell you, and I always say I got to tell you, don't I, when I get to this part. But I do. I got to tell you. I like this. This is super nice. This is one of the best Kubuntu versions I've come across. I think they really took Kubuntu and just made it perfect. I've run Kubuntu before. It's one of my more favorite versions of Ubuntu is the Kubuntu. Uh, I think it's really a fantastic project. The Tuxedo team here really took it to the next level. They put all the stuff on there that is really important, like the VLC and the Codex. I really like that they put Firefox in as a deb file, a binary, as opposed to the snap, which is cool. In fact, I believe the snaps are disabled as well. Although you can go ahead and manually install the snaps if you do want to have them. But by default, they are disabled. And I think it's perfect that the Firefox is there. And I like the fact that they got the flat pack all set up. So you have access to FlatHub right from Discover. So it's nice that that's integrated as well. So you have access to the latest and greatest software like Inkscape. You want the newest version. And then there's other situations where you just want the stable version. Not that Inkscape wouldn't be stable in a flat pack because it is very stable, but it's a flat pack. If 1.2 were in a binary and came onto this desktop, then you probably have some issues with some libraries possibly. So a flat pack kind of takes care of all that. It kind of runs it all in its own container. If you're a Windows user, it's probably, I guess I could equate it to maybe a, a portable app in Windows. So. Yes, and the other thing is the theming. The theming is very beautifully coordinated and it seems to be working really well with all the different applications. I know in a lot of distros, well, maybe not a whole lot, but in some distros I've come across where you have a nice theme, and but then you open up, say, LibreOffice, and then it doesn't look right on the toolbar. It's, the fonts are hard to read, or maybe Inkscape or some other application will look beautiful. And then another one, again doesn't look good on the toolbar and the fonts are kind of blending in and aren't colored right so sometimes you get variations and theming problems and i'm not seeing that here so the theme just is really tight and looks great so that's the other big plus so even if you don't have a tuxedo computer this distro is absolutely perfect i haven't found any real issues in my short time of reviewing this, <laughs> which is great and very stable. Of course, you got the stability of Kubuntu and all that. So what more could you ask for? It's awesome. Double thumbs up. And if you're looking for a tuxedo system, like a notebook or a desktop all over Europe, they offer free shipping. Wow, that is really cool. So how cool is that? And with that, I hope this review was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and hit subscribe. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.